summertime is here and you know what that means bikini waifus everywhere oh and also the spring season animes are wrapping up right about now I thought it'd be helpful for me to give you guys my top 5 anime from this past spring season because not everyone like myself watches every anime under the sun when they are releasing. Since this is going to be a longer video, we're just going to jump right into this. At number 5, I have a couple of cuckoos. Being one of the several romance animes that released this season, it stood out from the rest mostly because of the borderline incestiness and waifus that can make you drool. This show follows Nagi, a child who was swapped at birth, and while on his way to meet his real parents, he meets a girl named Erica. And one boob grab leads to a day of them hanging out and trying to break up Erica's prearranged marriage. After this entire ordeal, Nagi then arrives to meet his real parents, and it turns out Erica was the child he was swapped with at birth. And the parents were setting them up to be married so they could be parents of both the kids, and they just hadn't told Nagi yet. And then it still gets weirder, like his thought to be blood related sister who's now basically a sister in law I guess is like what's up step bro and then there's this absolute dying piece named Hiro who's a shrine maiden and they can't have relationships but that's not stopping my guy Nagi. You get the gist of the show. Lots of rom-com antics go on in this show with heartwarming romantic moments that just tease you because only God knows if anyone actually gets together in a romantic anime. It makes a lot of fun to watch though. Also, the art and animation look really well done. It's something you can just sit back and enjoy the waifus. The next and fourth place, we have Summertime Rendering. And I know there are some people out there raging, smashing their keyboards at this one. But just hear me out. It's a great show. It just didn't captivate me like the top three did. I didn't watch it religiously the day it came out like the others. This mystery series is very good and I really enjoyed watching it, but since it's a 24 episode season instead of a 12, it's continuing on to the summer season, which is why I think I didn't like it as much as the others is because they had hit their climax and this one's still building up to it. But this show follows Jean Pei as he travels back to his home island to attend a funeral for his friend who had died saving a child drowning. Once he gets there though, some weird things start to happen and he learns that the accident is just a cover up because the body was found with strangle marks around her neck. It's very well written, it never feels like it's moving too slow or too fast, there's always something that happens of note in each episode and it looks fantastic as well. I recommend this to anyone, especially if you're into mystery or supernatural series. <laughs> Then next up, third on my list is Trapped Inside of a Dating Sim. This show struck me as an absolute pile of steaming horse pucky, but I was pleasantly surprised how much I enjoyed the show, specifically the main character with his unique personality, to put it lightly. This show follows Leon, who's forced to play a dating sim game to completion, and dreads dealing with the love interest and fighting against his competition in the game. Once he finishes it, he falls down a set of stairs and dies, to be reincarnated into the world of the game. After this, he vows to live a mob character life and lay low, but circumstances force him not to, and he basically just repeatedly demolishes and embarrasses and humiliates all of the characters he hated and boy does he enjoy every second of it. The poop stain of a personality the main character has is just so enjoyable, and his little robot friend's banter is funny as well. I watched the show pretty much solely to see him just absolutely disrespect some people. Don't get me wrong, there's more to the story like the mystery surrounding this girl and some B-plot romance, but I assure you, if you watch this show, you will continue to watch this show for the Chad alpha male of an MC that is Leon. Then in second place we have Tomodachi Game, and just speaking of a Chad Alpha Male character, here we have Chadigiri. Thank you so much for the amazing nickname by the way, I love it. He's just another maniacal MC that just does and takes what he wants and just whatever he needs to do, it's done, he doesn't care who's in his way. This show follows Katagiri, that's Chadigiri's real name, and his group of friends. One day, all the funds for their school trip goes missing and they are kidnapped and placed into the Tomodachi game. One of them had used the money to enter them into the game and all the true personalities, hidden secrets and motives and evilness of the game are revealed and just slowly drip fed to you in the most 
amazing way possible. The story basically just follows Chattagiri and his friends going through the Tomodachi game and him trying to take down the organization from inside, but the main appeal is how he goes about it. He steps on anyone in his way, and he's a very interesting past as well. Like this person said, he carries the show and is yet again the reason I am watching it. The plans he comes up with and the way he executes his ideas are just super fun to watch and then also seeing the pasts of all the friends and hearing their stories is a close second. I think it's fair to say I just like MCs that are jerks and are focused on revenge and taking people down. I think I have a type. Towards the end, they did something with the MC that I honestly didn't care for too much though and it kind of soiled his persona for me, so I'm not really sure how I feel about it because it was kind of redeemed in the next episode, but it left a smudge that I can't really get rid of. But also, it could just be something that he's setting forth into a plan for the future, so I'm not sure how I feel about it. Then finally in first place, the anime that took everything by storm, Spy Family. I don't know what to say, I mean, just look at Yor, she alone can make me watch any show. This show follows Twilight, a spy who is tasked with starting a normal family and entering a child into a school in order to get close to a big political figure that wants to start a war between the two nations. Except there's nothing normal about this family. Lloyd, or Twilight, is a spy from a different nation. The daughter that he brings into his family is Anya, a telepath, and the wife that he finds to marry him, Yor, is absurdly hot. And she's an assassin. I don't know if there's an anime fan out there that hasn't watched this show, but if you haven't, you will not be disappointed. They have small action scenes that are insanely well done and choreographed. Adorable scenes that can warm the coldest of hearts. Slice of life antics that are just way too funny. It's just basically a jack of all trades and Cloverworks just killed the production of this adaptation and they stayed really close to the manga which I appreciated because it was also a work of art. And then I have some honorable mentions for you. I have Dance 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 Swa. I rated it my number one sports anime this season. Then I have Aowashi. I rated it my second favorite sports anime. Especially if you love soccer, go watch this one. It stays very close to the sport. It has real life examples of what you're actually supposed to do. It's really interesting for a soccer player. The Executioner's Way of Life is an isekai type story with a spicy, spicy twist to it. I considered all of these for my list at one point. They just didn't make it but I think you guys might enjoy these too. But that's my top five anime for this spring season. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and let me know what your top five were. I'm interested to see what everybody is watching this season and I'll see you in the next one.